If I may now descend from that high aspirational level to a domestic issue, which is that at quarter to three the fire alarm uh, 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 <coughs> signal will go off and uh, we will be warned of, of a fire drill at, at, at three o'clock. Um, so um, forgive us if the meeting needs to be disrupted briefly at that time. Right. I may now move, if I may, to the formal business of the meeting and to uh, move to the first item, which is the minutes um, of the last meeting, and to ask my colleagues whether there are any comments which they have on those minutes or are happy to sign them off as a fair and accurate record. Thank you. They are. I have not been advised of any matters arising from the minutes other than those that are otherwise substantively on the agenda. Uh, so if we may, I would like to get on with some of the uh, substantive business. And the first paper uh, to which we're going to be directing our attention this afternoon is that relating to clinical commissioning group authorization, uh, the draft guide for, application, for applicants, I'm sorry. And I would like to invite Dame Barbara Haken to introduce the paper. Thank you, Chairman. Um, uh, and I'm pleased to ask the board um, to approve um, the draft guide uh, for applicants, uh, clinical commissioning groups for authorisation. Um, it is a draft guide um, because uh, the only organisation which can um, publish the full guide, of course, is the board itself when it comes into being, hopefully, um, on October the 1st. Um, but uh, it's really important that clinical commissioning groups at this early stage understand what we're going to be expecting of them through authorisation. Um, and I think uh, it would be fair to say that um, whilst there may be changes, uh, minor changes to this, uh, particularly as the regulations underpinning the bill go through Parliament, we don't expect if the board signs this off today and approves it the board authority, um, that actually there would be substantial changes and clinical commission groups will be able to go ahead with this document and, and prepare for their authorisation journey. Um, as everyone knows, um, by April the 1st, uh, 2013, the whole of England um, will be covered by um, established clinical commissioning groups and the um, current commissioning organisations will be abolished. Um, and therefore, over the next 12 months, um, the, the clinical commission groups across England will be preparing to take on this responsibility. Um, we're expecting in the order of 220 uh, clinical commissioning groups who have to be authorised in that time frame um, and we shouldn't underestimate that both for the people out there on the ground working to prepare their applications um, and the uh, NHS commissioning board authority and subsequently the board this isn't a, a, a massive undertaking. Uh, one of the things that we've tried to do in uh, creating the guide for applicants is um, work in the new style chairman. So uh, rather than having uh, a document which was created behind closed doors and then published with a flurry, this uh, document has been widely circulated. Um, it, it was, I was at one stage somewhat amused um, when an, a publication suggested it had been leaked, uh, you know, a document that we'd actually sent to somewhere in the order of 500 people. Um, so I think that it is fair to say that um, lots of individuals, stakeholders, policy colleagues, individuals in CCGs, um, patients' uh, representatives have been involved and have been very helpful um, in uh, helping us to create this document. And I think it probably is fair to say um, that on the whole, the style um, of the document has been well received, particularly by the clinical commissioning groups themselves. And I think that they are um, cautiously optimistic that it heralds a style of, of working together and co-production that they would like to see for the future. Um, that notwithstanding, you know, the, the uh, uh, authorisation process itself will be absolutely critical. Um, because the uh, NHSCB has a duty to assure itself that CCGs are able to commission safely uh, and to discharge their stewardship for very considerable amounts of public money and make sure that they improve outcomes for patients, reduce inequalities, um, all within the available resource. Um, and the uh, applicant's guide uh, is, and, and the way that we do the authorisation process is designed to ensure um, that those basic minimum standards of safe delivery of commissioning functions are actually, can actually take place. 
Nonetheless, we need to recognise that we are um, authorising brand new organisations, organisations that are in their, their very early stages of their lives, and we felt we would have um, really missed an enormous opportunity if we simply uh, focused on the, the minimum essentials um, that we considered were uh, appropriate for safe authorisation. So therefore, we've worked with CCGs to create a document that accepts that um, this authorisation is the first stage on a journey. Um, so you'll see as you look through the, um, the sections of the document uh, that actually each part suggests the, the, not necessarily the end point but further down the line on the journey and what CCGs would aspire to um, as well as trying to identify the set of thresholds uh, which we would expect would give the board confidence that CCGs were, were able to discharge the duties um, that I've just described. Uh, we've uh, a few principles underpinning this document. Um, we wanted the whole process to be fit for purpose, robust, but also cost effective. Um, uh, not only developmental, but actually set the positive tone um, for the relationship between the NHSCB and CCGs, a new tone of partnership, co-production, um, working together, the concept of one team um, uh, who were kind of completely locked together in trying to deliver through commissioning better services for the public and patients. Um, and also, uh, another couple of key principles. Firstly, we wanted um, most of the evidence that was submitted to be a byproduct of day-to-day uh, -day business rather than that uh, we created a, a, an additional uh, set of work. And also, national consistency is really important for us. Um, we set off on this journey some while ago and described six domains that we thought would uh, be appropriate for a good clinical mission. We, we were talking to people actually identifying what what were the key features um, that they would like to see in a commissioning group that was really going to commission well, um, clinically led, but patient focused being the two uh, key, key issues. And those six domains, as we've um, uh, extended the process and put the flesh on the bones appear to have stood the test of time and so the document is based around those six domains of um, the, the key clinical focus quality um, at the heart of everything that we do uh, the second domain meaningful uh, engagement with patients carers communities um, the fact that all these organisations do absolutely need a clear and credible plan, they, their responsibilities will be very significant for their populations and they must be able to uh, uh, demonstrate how they're going to deliver the full range of services within the resource. Um, the issues, the full issues around capacity, capability and governance, which are absolutely key. Uh, these public bodies will um, need to demonstrate uh, that uh, the NHS, the local NHS is safe in their hands and they have the right processes, um, including their capacity uh, in terms of securing commissioning support from outside their organisations. Uh, and then the final two domains, one was um, their ability to collaborate, um, most critically with their local partners, local authorities, uh, and on their health and wellbeing boards, but also with other CCGs where um, commissioning together, um, as well as joint commissioning with the local authority will be key, and the collaboration with the NHS commissioning board um, and its direct commissioning role. And, and finally, that these organisations should be well-led, great leaders um, who really um, can, can make the change that, that we all want to see. Um, however, um, in and amongst those areas, we had to ensure that we covered um, the key, a, a certain set of key issues that CCGs had to perform. So, firstly, that, it, uh, that also we were checking that they were capable of delivering all the expectations of the Health and Social Care Act. Uh, secondly, that they had all the processes in place um, to do all the things they need to do as a statutory body. Now, there is a, a, a significant range of things that all statutory bodies need to deliver, think areas such as equality and diversity. Um, and, and then actually threaded through that the characteristics of, of, uh, of being capable of delivery. Um, when we've tried to calibrate the thresholds and understand uh, at, w at which point we would pitch um, the level that we considered that these organisations were safe to deliver, um, we have had emphasis on certain areas. There's a huge range of things that CCGs need to do and we need to give them time to develop many of those areas, but certainly in areas such as quality, safety, financial management, governance, uh, planning and capacity, uh, uh, capacity and capability for planning then actually um, the, as we move through the authorisation process we expect the bar to be um, high for those areas because they're of, uh, of such importance. 
Um, we will be moving shortly into the um, process of authorisation, and I'll come back uh, to that in a minute. Um, but the authorisation process can result in three uh, different um, fun three different endpoints for CCGs. The first is that they are fully authorised um, to commission services. The second is that they are authorised with conditions, um, and the applicant's guide starts to uh, dip into uh, what that might look like, although its primary process is to do what it says on the tin and be a guide for the applicants as to how to become authorised without any conditions. Um, but the authorised with conditions means that um, the board can put in a range of interventions uh, to help support um, and give itself assurance uh, that CCGs uh, can become commissioners, so they are authorised, but actually the board has some measures in place um, which gives it confidence about their ability. And then finally a group which could be established but not authorised, uh, at which point the board would have responsibility to make alternative arrangements uh, for commissioning. So um, what I would uh, hope is that the board could broadly um, approve this guide. Um, I'd like to here to record my thanks to all the people who've helped to work on it. It has been an enormous amount of work over the last few months and I think um, the, the, the guide reflects that. Um, and I think that we would then move on to the next steps. And um, we're now reaching the point, I think, where the board uh, needs to assure itself, the board authority on behalf of the board um, needs to assure itself that it is in a position to have clinical commissioning groups across the whole of England, whether established, uh, authorised or authorised with conditions. And therefore I um, would suggest to the board um, that in order to move through the authorisation process that we've now set up in a timely fashion, um, all CCGs within the next few weeks need to be clear about their configuration and the nature of their constituent practices. Um, so as we move into that implementation stage, if the board's happy to sign off the um, draft guide uh, for today, what I would ask is that uh, I can bring back to you to the May board um, a uh, comprehensive list of the CCGs across England who have their geography settled in order to go through the authorisation process and that would include their uh, constituent practices um, as well as a definition of the geographical area. Um, hopefully a first cut of which of those CCGs uh, would be expected to be in, in which waves of authorisation because many of them have already um, given an early indication um, because I think we need to do those two things in order to make the very tight uh, deadlines in this process and have everybody up and running on the 1st of um, August. Uh, 1st of April 2013, sorry, and then finally at the next board meeting to bring back um, the detailed proposals on how we can assure that this process is rigorous, fair, um, has the right amount of independent oversight for the board to, to gain assurance of that, um, but also uh, a, a more detail about how we intend to run this process in a way which is really commensurate with our ambition that things will be really different in the future and in a way which is um, starts the process of a really fruitful relationship between the Commissioning Board and the CCGs.